Hello and welcome to the Huffle Bustle. Today I'm going to show you, okay, not today. Two months ago I filmed this video on me getting dressed in the Huffle Bustle, um, but I forgot to film an intro, so here I am awkwardly filming an intro two months later. Now, if I can be real with you guys for a few minutes, since I am filming this, um, this part of the video on June 5th, 2020, obviously a lot has happened since early April. In particular, the news of George Floyd's death has hit my family like a ton of bricks. Um, my husband, who routinely bears the weight of racism without complaining, has been struggling to find his smile. We are all hurting. It feels almost flippant to share a video about a something as frivolous as getting dressed in a 19th century bustle gown from a time period when my husband and I would not be allowed to be together, let alone be married. But Brian suggested to me that this is all the more reason that I should post the video. I actually asked him to write something up for me because he is far more eloquent than I am. Our world is dark today, but it has been darker, and each of us bring our own light in our own way. My art is my way. So perhaps this little frivolous video can be a small part of that light. That's all I can hope for right now. So I guess I'll turn it over to past Chelsea for the video. So here I am in my modern quarantine wear. Um, kind of just been wearing a lot of pajamas, comfy clothes. I've started wearing an 18th century pocket just around my waist because most of my comfortable pants and skirts do not have pockets. And obviously I can add pockets to them. I can sew. But you know it's even easier than adding pockets to existing skirts? Tying one around your waist. Alright, let's get started. This is one of my Regency shifts. I don't have an actual Victorian chemise yet. So I just wear my Regency shift for everything. Pretty much. American Duchess stockings. Very important to put these on before the corset. It's also a good idea to put the shoes on before your corset, although these just slip on my feet, so I'm going to leave them for now. My red threaded 1860s corset, because I don't have an 1880s one, this will do just fine. comfortable. Actually gives a lot of back support, which is good for me. And now I'm going to do my hair. And just to be as decadent as possible. I'm going to wrap in this lovely satin robe, which I made from an old sheet. Someday I will make myself a silk banyan, like all the cool kids are doing. 
But for now, this is the next best thing. I freely admit that I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to most decades of historical hair. I'm pretty good at Regency because I've done that a lot. my hair turned out, curlers wise. It's a couple hours later. I gave it all the curls a blast with the hair dryer. They're still a bit damp. So I'm going to do my makeup while I wait for them to dry. There's currently nothing on my face except some moisturizer with SPF 15, which is what I where every time I wash my face, I'm going to put on a little bit of foundation. This is just CoverGirl True Blend. And a little bit of powder, also CoverGirl True Blend. Now I'm going to use my Besame Cake Mascara in brown for my eyebrows. a lot better in my mirror than it does on the camera. You'll just have to trust me. I wash my brush and go in with black for my eyelashes. I really love this form of mascara because I can do a light touch for a... ignore that. because I can do a light touch for a more natural, historical look. Or if I want to, I can add up multiple layers and get really dramatic with it. For today, I just want my eyelashes to be seen. Because they are very blonde. Now I just need a little something on the cheeks and lips. I like to use this LBCC Rose Balm Lip and Cheek Palmatone. Stab a little bit on the apples of my cheeks. And blend. Subtle rosy glow. And then a bit more on my lips. My lips are naturally very pale, so I like to have just a little bit of tint to them. Obviously without going the full lipstick route, because that would be very 20th century. And we're aiming for 19th. And I love this because it feels really nice too. It's a balm, so it moisturizes as well as 
and it smells nice. Okay, I just can't wait any longer to do my hair. So, if they're not dry, they're not dry. So far this is not turning out at all like I'd envisioned. It's almost very 60s beehive. But I'm hoping it will work with the hat. Now time for uh, curly bangs. Okay, we're back. So I've discovered that this vanity setup that I have here is really just not good for doing hair at all. Um, I need better lighting because all my light is coming from overhead and a bigger mirror. So I just went and finished up my hair in the bathroom because this was driving me absolutely bonkers and I wasn't enjoying it, but I think I've gotten a decent finished product. It'll look better with a hat on. And now for the gown. Um, as you can see, I will be wearing my Huffle Bustle, which is in three parts. Underskirt, overskirt, bodice. First, I need a petticoat. Scratch that. First, I need my bustle. This is my bustle. I made it from the truly Victorian pattern. For the imperial bustle, I believe it is. It was super easy to make. But very quickly. Now the petticoat. I made this bad boy out of an old bed skirt because it already had the ruffle on it. Looks at the back waist. And 
then pull up these drawstrings. I did not use a pattern for this petticoat at all. I completely made it up. Now we'll do the shoes. Oh, first, put some shoe clips on them. These came with the shoes. They are the American Duchess Amelie satin pumps. In my favorite shade of blue. And I realize they do not match my gown, but I like to wear them with it because, although I am a Hufflepuff, my secondary house is Ravenclaw. Hence the blue shoes. It's just kind of a secret little Ravenclaw nod. Now the underskirt. Swishy, swishy tafta. Now the tricky part about this is there are ties inside the skirt. Which need to be tied over the bustle so that the front and sides of the skirt hang smoothly. And it is a little tricky to do this on myself, but I'm going to attempt it. Find the top ties, pull until the skirt is taut, straight back, and tie the bow. A bit straight. Make sure the skirt is lying smoothly in front. Then locate the second. Set of ties and do the same thing. <laughs> Can't quite bend that far. <laughs> and now you can see the skirt is being held back over my hips and the bustle. And all of the fullness is concentrated at the back. There's a little bit of wrinkling in the front because, like I said, it's easier to have somebody else do it. But I didn't have that option this time. And this back pleat just kind of folds over on itself does its own thing. Okay, so that's the underskirt. Now the overskirt. The ties on this one are already tied, fortunately, so I should be able to get away with just using them the way they are. This skirt closes at the side back and there should be hooks and eyes all the way down the pocket but I have yet to finish putting those on. So, the ties do the same thing for the overskirt. Just pull it all taut across the front. Get those nice pleats 
in the apron. Goodness, tough it is, noisy. And, uh, I was supposed to line this with a stiff netting, but I didn't. So, it doesn't hold its shape quite like it's supposed to. Like that. Yeah, it falls down. Oh well. It's still fun. Let me just... Safety pin this closed. Good enough. And have I mentioned I put pockets in the underskirt, which are conveniently hidden by the overskirt when I'm wearing it, but still easy to access. Now the bodice. These are all truly Victorian patterns, by the way. I will put the links in the description. Now, there's a bit of a flatness that happens up here, but luckily I know how to fix that. And this is actually what Victorians did in the period. I stole these bust pads from my 1860s gown, the bodice of which is currently taken apart. And voila! This is soft. It's fun to pet. Now for the jewelry. These earrings are from the Lady de Tal. Lovely little Victorian chandeliers. This brooch is a vintage one from my collection, and I added the locket, which came from my grandmother's jewelry store. I think I'm just going to close the top collar with this brooch. That looks nice. And the finishing touch is, of course, my shocking bad hat.
this is a look. <laughs>